Greetings. My name is Dr. Laura Christensen, and I'm an assistant professor and extension specialist in the Department of Crop Sciences at the University of Illinois. Today, we'll be talking about controlled drainage. The practice known as controlled drainage is the practice of using adjustable control structures to manage the level of the drainage outlet. This practice retains water and nitrate in the soil when drainage isn't critical. You can see from the figure, under conventional drainage, you lower the water table to the elevation of the drain pipe. Once that drain pipe is installed, you're always lowering the water table to that elevation. However, in the right side of the picture, under controlled drainage, the control structure allows you to manage the level of the drainage outlet. You can see that water will not flow out of that drain pipe unless it is at or above the elevation of the top board in that control structure. There are two parts of this definition that I want to highlight. First of all, this practice usually involves a series of control structures throughout a field. So there is physical infrastructure involved. Secondly, there's also a management component involved in the practice of controlled drainage. The idea with controlled drainage management is that after harvest, you insert boards into the control structure to increase the elevation of the drainage outlet. Again, water can't flow out of that drainage system unless it's at or above the elevation of that top board. Next, a couple weeks prior to when you know you're going to plant or need to do springtime field operations, you remove all of those boards. In that case, the drainage system is functioning at full capacity at it, as it was designed to do to drain your field for springtime operations. The third management phase is that after planting, when you're done with field operations in the spring, you insert boards back into the control structures, again to raise the outlet elevation. But in this case, you don't want to raise the outlet elevation so high as to hurt root growth. After planting, you still want healthy aeration in the root zone, but you can use this time to store some soil moisture in the field. As I just said, the control structures create the physical infrastructure required for this practice of controlled drainage. It's usually not just one control structure per field or per drainage system. It may actually require more than that depending on the field slope. Inside the control structure, we use boards, sometimes called stop logs, sometimes called plates or gates or flashboard risers. These are essential, essentially mini check dams inside the control structure. These boards are raised and lowered or added and removed like we discussed before. Since this is a conservation drainage practice, you may be wondering how well does controlled drainage work to reduce nitrogen loss from my field or how effective is the practice of controlled drainage for keeping water clean? Controlled drainage is generally rated as reducing nitrogen loss by about 30 to 40 percent on an annual basis. There are siting limitations for this practice due to the number of control structures that you need. Typically, you need one control structure for every one to two feet elevation change in your field. It's also more difficult, not impossible, just more expensive, to retrofit old drainage systems to do the practice of control drainage. I'll end on two high notes. The wildlife folks like the practice of controlled drainage because the water tables can be raised high enough in the winter to provide shorebird habitat for migrating birds. And lastly, the practice of controlled drainage is one of the few water quality improvement practices that we promote that has the potential to provide a yield benefit. Not in every year, but it is there. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.